So I was at my uh, parents' house for Easter, and my sister-in-law was telling me that their daughter, my niece, Mr. Webman's daughter, uh, wrote Santa in the middle of spring, which is, you know, I mean, get it started early, why not? And she asked Santa for a leprechaun for Christmas. Here's the here's the problem with that. I mean, hey, that's a that's a weird ask. Okay, cool. Take that into consideration. But two, my brother, Mr. Webman, is terrified of uh, the leprechaun horror movies, and he's a guy who loves horror. He consumes all horror movies, finds most of it funny and ridiculous, and just so fake and whatever while the rest of us are freaking out, except for the Leprechaun movies. He is terrified of those movies, and it's very triggering to him because he was way too young when he saw it in the first place. And so I think, I think, I have him convinced to dress up as a Leprechaun for Halloween or whatever, or at any point, really, because you could always dress up as a Leprechaun, and so maybe it'll be a twofer. It'll help my niece with her ask from Santa, or whatever, and also it may help Mr. Webman get past his fear of leprechauns, but he has to do it right. He has to actually start the costume at his knees so he'll be shorter, right? Otherwise it doesn't make sense. You're not a leprechaun, sir. You're a, you're a, you're a normal sized person. You're giant, whatever. And so he's going to put shoes on his knees and that's it. That's all I have. It's a funny story and I like it. Yeah, today's soap is not sponsored by leprechauns, or Santa, or Mr. Webman, and it's not even like green, or shamrock, or whatever. This is my time. I will tell you what we are making in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 272 of 365 days of soap. We're playing with that lemon verbena that I was telling you about a couple days ago from Sierra Candles. So this is bar three of four for the fruit summer line. And we're doing weird things with it. A, I get to do some drop swirls, because I haven't done drop swirls in a very long time, and I'm very excited about it. But two, the Soap and Clay Kidlets have been working on a really cool epic project with me. And it's big, and it's epic, and it's a lot of fun. But while they were looking through all of my drawers and all the different molds and stuff that I had available, they found these little gummy bear molds that we had all forgotten about. And they decided that they very much wanted these last two soaps topped with the little gummy bear figurines. And I thought, you know what, that actually kind of works because this lemon verbena in and of itself, it smells like a really sugary cereal, like tricks. And so like having things that look like little gummy bears on the top could be fine anyway. So, you know, let's go to the video. You can check out my epic drop swirling techniques and, you know, all the things. There. I know, I know, my audio has been crap for the past few videos. I don't understand why, and Mr. Soap and Clay is, um, you know, really busy, and he's the guy that needs to do these things, and so we're just going to roll with it, because why the hell would I put something else on his plate when he already has so much? Today, we are doing the third of the summer soaps, and it's the Lemon, lemon Verbena by Sierra Candles, and I said a couple days ago that it was going to get its own moment in the sun, and this is that moment, because this scent is so 
yummy. Like normally whenever I've smelled a lemon verbena, it's all very acidic. And this particular scent blend is sweet. More like a lemon meringue. Very delightful. Smells like trick cereal. It smells like candy. It's very sweet and fun with, you know, definite hints of like a sugared lemon. And so I totally wanted to play with it and make it part of my summer soap line because I adored this scent all on its own. I mixed it with the lavender from Sierra Candles for an ombre gradient, an ombreant that I made a couple days ago. But this one just on its own is stunning, like absolutely stunning. And so I wanted to give it its own special thing. So, so far we have for the summer line, as far as the fruits go, a, a soap that is primarily lime with some hints of orange. So the lime basil mandarin. And what else did we do? What did we do yesterday? Oh, the dragon fruit. Right. Which is not at all a dragon fruit. I don't know what dragon fruit smells like. Already talked to you about that, but it's uh, the lavender and spring apricot from Sierra Candles. But I liked this one so much in one of the... Also pay attention to that, plus what this batter ends up looking like when I put the lemon verbena in it. But the lavender lemon blend that I made for one of my wholesale accounts, super yummy. And I wanted the lemon verbena to stand on its own. So we're going to have the lemon. And then the fourth in the summer soap line, I believe, is going to be an orange. Like a, like a blood orange scent. But that's actually not what I intended it to be. I had every intention of putting a mango in it. Because mango in summertime is sort of a... Like a... No, no kidding. Of course you do that in a summer soap line. I didn't end up doing that. I did an orange. And those reasons I'll tell you about tomorrow. But we are going to do drop swirls. I never get to do drop swirls anymore, guys. This is super fun. I get to do some drop swirls. Haven't done them in a very long time. And you know, that's what we're planning for this pour. So we've got purple, burgundy, copper, and then the base is going to be yellow. And that's a fine yellow. And it was the lemon cupcake from Mad Micah's for that yellow. Pay attention to these three colors as well as the lemon, but pay attention to what happens to this batter when the, uh, the fragrance goes, oh god, it's getting orange. It's getting very orange. Okay, so pay attention to that and like pay attention to this right now and then remember this when we cut. And then prepare to be like big shooketh, really, because the other three colors are not changing at all. Just the one that has a lemon cupcake in it changed pretty significantly. Like it's getting oranger in front of our very eyes while I am stirring in the fragrance into the rest of them. And I don't see a ton of darkening for the three other colors. So I'm gonna go with it's the lemon cupcake that's causing this, right? I don't know. Let's go check out this pour. So in the amount of time that it took me to get the mold into frame, which was maybe 30 seconds, look how much oranger the, the, the yellow part got. That's a lovely orange. Again, just keep that in mind uh, for the whole thing, including the cut. Like, I guess, obviously, especially the cut. But for the drop swirls, I poured about a third of the soap batter of the main soap color into the mold. And then I am just using these extra colors and just putting lines one over the top of the other at varying degrees of height to create some drop swirls in all of this. And this is reasonably best done with what the people on the interwebs call a thin to medium trace. And so the soap batter has to be 
reasonably thick enough to like hold its own when you're pouring it into the mold, but not so thick that it's going to come out in big lops and obviously not so thin because it's not going to hold the drop shape. So that's what I'm doing. That's the whole idea behind all of this. And also I'm going to top it with weird toppers because the soap and clay kidlets, we are, we are doing this really cool thing right now. It's a very intense uh, project that we're working on and it's, uh, it's a lot. It involves a lot of artistry that I don't do really. But one of the shows that the Soap and Clay Kidlets and I watch together and love uh, is the inspiration behind this entire thing. And again, it does require some very real artistry that usually doesn't have anything to do with soap, but we're going to make it a soap project. Anyway, they were in the shop. They were looking at all my little molds to see what could be used or whatever. And they found these little these little molds that look like little gummy bears. There you go, Th those. And they were like, mom, we haven't used these in a long time. And to that I say fair point because we have not used those in a long time. And so I have been on this kick recently where I have decided that if I haven't used a mold in one calendar year's period, I am putting those molds in a box that I will use for a D stash, like live or, you know, thing on the, in the discord or whatever at some point, because I'm not using them, but that doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't want to use them. And so just give them away. Crap. They're just taking up space in my, you know, room and somebody else might actually really want to use this for whatever they're doing in their soapy business. But for this one, it has a stay of execution right now because the soap and clay kid let's went, let's use these. And I don't know what it has to do with anything that we're doing for the summer fruit collection, but it doesn't matter. It's cute. It's a nice little fun topper. And as I said, in doing this, it gave these molds a stay of execution for another year. So smart thinking uh soap and clay kidlets i i that's nice your your little gummy mold thingies get to be here for a little while longer and that's awesome so we use the exact same colors that we used inside of the soap itself to create all of these little mold all of these little animal thingies and it was all done with melt and pour. Now in a couple days, I will have a new soap dough recipe that is 100% uh, needed for this crazy project that I am doing with the soap and clay kidlets. But you can also use soap dough in little teeny tiny, you know, molds like this. To achieve the same effect without the glycerin dew that tends to form on the top of a melt and pour soap. So if you would like to do that as well, feel free, have a bowl, you know, whatever. Cold process too can also be poured into these little teeny tiny molds, but that's an extra day's worth of prep and I usually don't do that. This will be sea popped and gelled and let's see what we got. This soap totally smells like tricks, but also pay attention. It doesn't look orange anymore, does it? So be it the lemon cupcake from Mad Micah's, be it the lemon verbena from uh, Sierra Candles, either way, it doesn't matter. It didn't stay orange after saponification. So let that be known to you. And look at my pretty drop swirls. It's very gorgeous. There's some very cool interaction with all the colors and everything and I it's very nice like I said I don't get to do drop swirls a whole lot anymore and there is a particular company whose soaps I was obsessed with many years ago that like that was their whole thing was just drop swirls I think it was soap jam like soap jam like preserves and they made beautiful drop swirls. And I just loved looking at all of the pictures of their soap. 
But, you know, I don't do a lot with drop swirls. So I never incorporated that into my line very much. But with this one, that's lovely. Th these are beautiful. They're very unique in their own way, but not like so gorgeous that nobody would use the soap. Because, yeah, you can look at it and go, yeah, it looks nice, and then smell it and go, yeah, it smells nice. But it's not so perfect that you can never use it again. Like, it just to, to look at and to smell. That's not this. This is the perfect combination of, like, beauty and scent and usability. So, yay! Super pretty. And this one, I did not specify, like, earlier in the video or whatever, but it's not made out of any sort of alcohols. I just did two for the Fruity Summer line with the White Claws. Mostly because we didn't have any else, we didn't have any more in the house. Like, there, there were no more. I used them all for the, you know, soaps. And so, Mr. Soap and Clay is going to have to, I guess, restock the, the White Claws for this weekend's barbecue. Because we're having one of those guys. Assuming the rain doesn't stop us from doing so. So note to self, I have to let him know that I took them all. But yeah, also, interesting steric spots in all of this too. Very cool pour. When it's all said and done, this made a really beautiful bar of soap. And after cure, that yellow almost faded completely to white. And so whatever I usually say about yellow is yellow is yellow, uh, that's true. Except for this lemon cupcake, which again ultimately faded to just a, a white or a light beige. And so I would recommend using like Lala if you want a proper yellow. But, you know, for now, that's day 272, the lemon summer soaps. And there they are, uh, the lemon verbena tricks gummy bear summer soaps. I don't know what I'm going to call them yet, but it'll be something fun, I'm sure. The kids will probably make it up for me because they're best at all of that. And yeah, they're beautiful. I forgot how much I like doing drop swirls. I don't actually do them a whole lot in my line, and so I was stoked to be able to do some, you know, today. So, yay, for sure. If you are interested in these soaps, you can get them at SoapandClay.com, and SoapandClay.com is coming back online very soon, and I'm very excited about it. If you're interested in finding out when that is, you can go to SoapandClay.com right now and type in your thing. Otherwise, you can just be here because I will make it a big deal when it finally does go live. In order to be here and be reminded, you could subscribe. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, you are a sudzer. You are everything. You are epic. You are awesome. Thank you so much. What do you think of that weird soap? I think it's pretty cool. I am out of here for today. Actually, I am starving. I need to go eat some foods. But I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.